Oh, yes, brother, man. We are live. How's it going, Rick? It's going, man. Going to be another great show. Oh, man. So good to be back on uh, YouTube and Facebook. Hey, guys, if you're watching us right now live on YouTube and Facebook, go ahead and hit those subscribes, hammer those like buttons, leave a comment, do anything you can to interact with the page. We got a great show today. Today is March 22nd, 2021. And uh, why don't you go ahead and let everybody know what we got going on today, Rick? Yeah, buddy. So our guest today is Jean-Claude LeBlanc. Um, so JC is, uh, he started up the American Tactical Canine Association, which he's going to talk about and kind of tell you about the fantastic seminar that's going on uh, end of September, oh. beginning of October. So the thing with that is he's pretty much brought a who's who within the canine world that's a hands-on seminar versus kind of your classic just sitting a uh, banquet hall or whatever, just listen to a lecture. So it'll be hands-on for the guys there. He also has direct action canine. And then, oh, by the way, we were teammates years ago in the Army. So uh, overall, just a fantastic American. JC, appreciate your service, brother, and welcome to the show, man. Welcome, brother. Thanks a lot, guys. Great for having me on, man. Yeah, man. Hey, I appreciate you showing, <laughs> right, so, uh, joining the yeah. show today, man, and uh, making sure that uh, it's okay. We got a little bit of delay, but uh, really appreciate your service, and thank you, and uh, thanks for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks a lot, brother. Appreciate it, man. All right, buddy. All right, so like Rick was saying, man, we, uh, yep, Rick and I go way back. We were canine handlers <laughs> for a while together, and uh, yeah, man, so uh, it's been a while, so glad to have you guys. Uh, broadcasting this stuff for us and helping promote the event. So uh, kind of the background on the American Tactical Canine Association was, you know, Rick, you and I, we, we attended all sorts of different venues while we were handlers. Um, you know, we, we were fortunate enough to have probably the best trainers in the nation uh, within our, uh, on our teams there. And we were also fortunate to have a budget to where we can go out and just train with anybody across the nation. Uh, so if we found value in the trainers that, uh, that we saw out there in the country. We just went ahead, hired them, brought them in or went to them and, and trained with them. And, and we got a lot of great experience and knowledge from all these guys. One of the things we used to do, um, as you remember, is we, we used to have these things called the soft canine symposium where we, we brought in all the best trainers from around the nation and, all the who's who of canine handlers to attend these things. So all your soft handlers from every background in the military, uh, all your high end law enforcement teams, you know, so, uh, sister services from, uh, from our foreign, uh, partners as well. So we used to have this thing and, you know, I figured why not have something like that for law enforcement? Um, I, I know that a lot of the guys that we brought in were very expensive, um, and not every department has the funding to be able to get that sort of level of training. So I wanted to be able to bring that level, that world-class training to the lowest levels of law enforcement and military and, and on up. So that's kind of where the, the, the idea came from. So we went ahead and, uh, started, we, we developed the organization. Um, it's a nonprofit organization. And the reason we did that was to try to solicit funds and donations from both private and corporate donors. So we can go ahead and host this conference at a very affordable rate for these handlers. Um, which is something, especially nowadays with, with the whole defund the police and all that going on, you know, canines kind of an afterthought when it comes to budget anyways. And now you've got all this additional, uh, hardships on the, on their budgets as well. So it's just, man, it, it, it makes it really hard for them to go out and get quality training. So I went ahead, reached out to all the same guys that we used to turn to uh, <laughs> when we were on the teams, man, you know, and some of them are probably doing it out of the good grace of their heart, you know, and just trying to help a brother out. And, you know, mm -hmm. others really see the value in, in what we're trying to do here. And they were all like, hell yeah, I want to be a part of that because they, they can kind of see where we're going to go with this one. And we really think this is, this is going to China change the culture um, of the canine world. So uh, we're really looking forward to this. Um, 
So some of the guys that we brought in, man, we've got uh, Armin Winkler. He's coming in. Mm -hmm. um, we've got uh, we've got. So just uh, just tell Rick. Me. Rick's coming in. <laughs> I, go ahead. I am. Just just give people a quick little. You know, like some people might not have. All right, go. Hey, who's this Armin Winkler guy? What's what's he? I mean, just a little bit. You know, either you can inject or I can inject because here's the beauty with Armin, right? Um, probably one of the best decoys out there, and Armin's a no BS dude. Um, if he sits there and tells nice you, "Hey, your dog," it. It, yep, you know, um, again, his, his European background, he's going to tell you like it is. He's either going to tell you your dog's in it to win it, or he's going to tell you, "Yeah, this dog don't hunt." And um, yeah, super good one on that one. But not to cut off you, you know, stealing your thunder there, but just you know, get a little more into the weeds. Some uh, with except for that warhawk tactical guy. I mean, people already know who that cat is. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Armin. Armin. Uh, this time he's not. Uh, he's not teaching a decoy class. Um, okay. Armin is going to talk about uh, you know the new age canine and how you incorporate them into the tactical teams. Mm -hmm. um, like you said, yeah, Armin. Armin is absolutely fantastic decoy. He's great at reading dogs and and building those dogs to uh, to get them to the level that we want them to be at to do our jobs. But Armin, Armin brings so much more to the table than just decoy work. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, Armin, Armin has worked with all the top tiers within the nation, both military and law enforcement. You know, he's worked Army and our Navy counterparts as well. Uh, FBI, their dogs, and and all your local, state, and federal agencies as well. Like he's he's really a go to guy for everything when it comes to canine. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, we've got Armin coming in. Then uh, we've got Franco Angelini coming in as well, the uh, canine bite doctor. He's going to go ahead and give us a good professional decoy class. And mm -hmm. Franco is great. At, at teaching guys how to be professional decoys, which is going to help their organizations and help build mm -hmm. their dogs for their training curriculum. Um, we've also got Mark Plunsk. Uh, he's he's uh, running the police canine consulting. And, and uh, Mark is going to be teaching uh, the Arm and Leggin uh, systems, which is basically it, it's it's a more realistic uh training apparatus when it comes to uh arm and leg it's basically your your rubber arms and legs mm -hmm. uh to where it gives that dog just a more realistic uh sensation when it comes to biting and it tries to tries to get rid of that e equipment fixation that, that a lot of the dogs have so yeah mark's going to be teaching that you know mark's another guy that's super well versed in in his mm -hmm. background you know he, he he comes from south florida he spent years down there as a handler and, and trainer and you know uh, i was fortunate enough to have mark as my trainer when i was in so hey. you know I'm, I'm really looking forward to him coming down there uh we've we've also got uh Paul Ludwig from Iron Dog Canine. He's going to come in, do a mm -hmm. lot of scenario-based training. You know, the, the cool thing about Paul is I had a We're losing a little bit, JC. Yeah, I think we might have lost him, Rick. Let's see if we can uh, give, yeah, we'll him, give him a second to, here to... Yeah. To reconnect. Give him a second here to yeah to power on. Um, yep. So basically, Jeremy was asking, and again, guys, versus me typing, I'll just kind of uh, hit my delete button. So basically, a decoy, Jeremy, is actually what the dog is going to go bite on. So um, what he's talking about as far as Mark goes. So typically, you've seen the big uh, Michelin Man suits or just the bite suits. That's typically yeah. what the dog's used to. The problem is dogs become you know, like um, JC was talking about equipment dependent. So what Mark's trying to do with this realistic kind of rubber arm, rubber leg is introduce that so that now the dogs aren't relying on equipment because we've seen in the past where now the dog is so used to equipment and it's not there. Now they don't know what to do. So a right. bunch of different ways to skin the cat. Um, but really the, the rubber arm, rubber leg is to me, it's a game changer. Because mm. what you're doing is is it's not like you're just sending the dog in and he's going straight for it. Typically, there's something where he can see it, not see it, maybe sees the decoy. Then all of a sudden, he tucks away, and boom, there's the arm of the leg kind of sticking out, and you know he's going for it. So, 
Uh, I see JC kind of down in there in the window, but not sure if he's. Yeah, we'll see back if we can on. get him back on. Looks like we uh, there we go. have audio. Yep. We got you yep. back, brother. Uh, don't worry about that. We deal with that all the time. Um, well, <laughs> Sometimes Mark goes out. <laughs> I, I've, I've had power outages and some, and uh, I disappeared for like 15 minutes. And uh, yeah, man, Rick just ran with the show. Him and uh, who was that? Was that Clint on with us that one day? No. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 One Can of our early guests. see a frozen screen uh-huh we'll give we'll give him another minute yeah but i think it's such a great idea the uh american tactical canine association that um jc's got going on i think it's a great idea to bring that quality of training to like you said all levels of law enforcement and when he mm -hmm. means levels he's not talking about um, skill level he's talking about municipality size uh federal sure. local state and all that stuff there's a lot of great guys that are starving and need the training and man mm -hmm. what a great tool that's going to be yeah. And the beauty is, you know, the way I understand it, and I don't want to, to speak for JC, but basically, yeah. you know, you're looking at, at five days of training. Um, and within that five days, you know, the handler is going to have kind of pick and choose what curriculum he's looking for. So it's not like, hey, you're stuck here. It's like, you know, rank your top whatever rating. Excuse me. And then what these guys are going to do is, is break it down in a way that tries to get the handler, you know, the maximum amount of mm -hmm. training for what he's looking for. Yeah. Um, you know, so on that, um, so they're having a storm there now, so we'll see if he can't, you want to see if he just can't dial in on just straight audio. Would that maybe be easier? I know we're going to lose yeah. a little video. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Whatever he can try, we'll go ahead and give it a shot, but yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see if we can't just get him straight audio. Um, yeah. He, yeah. He can but, just use the same link and just use audio. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's very interesting that, I mean, that's a good amount of training and I'm guessing that the, uh, the, the handlers and their, uh, canine partners will be able to either do uh, certain parts of it, you know, maybe something that they're lacking in, or they'll be able to attend all of them. Correct. Yeah. Well, they can't, I, I don't think they can attend all because I think he's okay. got more, there's more than just the five days or just the five. There's not just five instructors, if that makes sense. Yeah, so they could um, really um, cater to what their needs are and be very specific on what type of training they're going to attend. In in a perfect world, you know, barring they sit there and register early, um, kind of get those wish lists in and, yeah. and get the word in. Hopefully, they should be able to get the classes they want. Right. But you know, like JC was saying, man, it's kind of the the who's who of the dog world. So he kind of reached into the Rolodex. Here's the beauty, right? The things we used to do before, kind of circled back with everybody, hit mm -hmm. these guys up and you know, now form this association, it's like, boom, you know, you've got a one-stop shop for a week just to get some killer training and, yeah. you know, what hopefully get idea. the, yeah. JC, you got us, buddy? We see his mug, just no. Yeah. He's having some weather over there, so maybe he's yeah. uh, having some difficulty, so. Um, maybe try, maybe try this, brother. Just try going um, audio only versus the video and then hopefully jeremy that explained did you understand the whole decoy thing um as far as that piece goes so anyway guys if you're going to be listening to this on the audio show this will be tomorrow so you'll be listening on a tuesday um if you're on apple spotify or if you're on iheart radio amazon uh, audible or amazon music you can go ahead and do a search for On the Range Podcast. We should put pick up there um, and go ahead and click. It's absolutely free. Make sure that you go ahead and leave a comment, uh, like, give us a rating, and interact with all of those platforms as much as you can so we can boost this algorithm and get this uh, uh, exposed to more people. They, they base all that on rankings. And the more that you guys do that and help us out, the more reach we're going to have. So just keep, keep working on it and uh, interact with those pages. And don't forget to check out our Patreon page. Our Patreon page is patreon.com forward slash on the range podcast. A lot of good training in there. A lot of ways to interact with the page as well. Uh, JC, let us know if you can hear us, brother. And then uh, well, hopefully we can beat this algorithm and uh, give us some uh, boost. Yeah. And I mean, that's the biggest thing we're trying to do is how do we get, you know, the word out there to as many people. And then same thing. Um, yeah. So he can't hear us. Okay. Um, so, um, but really guys, you know, the, 
you got friends, you got family, you got whatever that you, you guys know, they're kind of loyal listeners, the basis that we cover, you know, you kind of know the guests that we bring on, just spread the word, you know, send them a link. Cause I'm pretty sure you can send them a link to the, uh, to the podcast and they just go, Hey, check this out. Or if there's an episode that resonates with you, you know, shoot them a note and go, Hey, check this out. Thought you might like it. Yep. Um, be- because the beauty is, you know, I know for me, uh, not so much, I guess Jeremy's having technical, technical difficulties there as well. Okay. Um, and I know for me, not so much in my local goings, but you know, when I'm sitting there going to make a road trip, let's say, for example, if I was heading to Ohio mm-hmm. to do some training, you know, you kind of stack up your, uh, your podcast deck. Granted, all I play is on the range podcast, but, uh, <laughs> you just let, the, <laughs> you yeah. let those episodes go and, and why not? So, um, JC, can you hear us? All right. All right, got you now. Sorry man. about that, guys. Man, no weather here. Nah, man. All good, buddy. We'll yeah. we'll continue to work through it. Yeah, buddy. So, I kind of okay. hit a little bit what Mark great, had man. going on. Um, you know, the south. There's something about South Florida, man, that pulls some pretty good uh, trainers out. So, um, but yeah, go ahead, oh, buddy. Yeah, absolutely, man. Okay, so uh, another guy we got is uh, Paul Ludwig from Iron Dog K9. He's going to go ahead and uh, do a lot of. Uh, kind of scenario based training and, and do some, do some uh, stuff like troubleshooting kind of stuff and expose guys to, to different things that they probably never thought of in their, uh, in their training. Um, and a lot of guys are like, ah, oh, man, that, that'll never, ever happen. Well, turns out sure enough, it does. And then because you never mm-hmm. trained for it, you're not prepared for right. it. So that, that's something that right. Paul's bringing, uh, you know, based on his experiences, you know, he was, he was a DC Metro cop for a long time. And, and like I said, he had, he had a couple situations that were really life threatening and because his dog wasn't prepared. So now he brings that training and, and, and his experiences to all the guys as well. Um, and then we've got, uh, our good friend, Pat Nolan, Pat's worked with us for a really mm-hmm. long time. And man, Pat, Pat has helped us out in the, uh, the detection realm. Um, he has given us the, the capability to direct our dogs off lead, kind of like the hunting dogs, man, just giving those dogs directionals and, and teaching us how to better detect explosives. Um, so that, that's some, that's a skill set that man, you know, it's one thing to, to be on an end of a leash looking for some drugs, it's a completely different thing when it comes to looking for bombs. And, and I'll be honest, I don't want to be at the end of a 15 or a 30 footer when it comes to finding bombs, you know? Um, so yeah, man. And, and, and I was fortunate enough to, to work a single purpose dog down range, utilizing everything that Pat had taught us. And man, you know, like I, I can't thank Pat enough for the skill sets that he gave to us. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really excited for him to be able to do the same for all these other explosive dog handlers as well. Um, then and another person JC, we got coming JC, out is oh, Ashley Horner. Yeah, go ahead. Hey, buddy, I just want to jump in real quick. So one thing, ahead, you Rick. know, especially on Pat, yes, yeah, it's one thing I want to hit on Pat, right? So a lot of guys, you know, here's the thing. If people look at Pat, primarily they know him for bird dog stuff, you know, and a lot of people would go, well, why do I need to get, you know, do that? And that's a prime example that you brought up. And I just want to harp that point a little more, um, you know, because people don't always look at, they're, they're always looking at that tactical application or how can I do this? And, dude, take everything you can get and use whatever you can so that dog will be the best ability. So I just want to put that plug in for Pat. And that was one of the things we quickly learned with him. So I'm sorry, go ahead and talk about uh, Ashley. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So Ashley, she's a, uh, <laughs> she's a big fitness freak, man. Um, so Ashley is going to go ahead and, um, we, we talked to Ashley a little bit and we talked to her about, Hey, you know, when it, when it comes to dog handling, there are a lot of things that you need to be capable of doing physically that you typically don't need to train, you know, for doing your normal cop or military job. When it comes to handling, like you, you work on muscles that that you didn't even realize you needed. You know, lifting dogs up over mm-hmm. walls, hoisting them by their leash. You know, like it, man, it it really is a physically demanding job. And unfortunately, a lot of guys don't know how to incorporate the proper exercise routines to make them better at performing their job physically. So 
we got with Ashley and Ashley is going to develop a, a handler specific conditioning course that guys can attend every morning and afternoon during the uh, conference. And, uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm looking forward to guys going out there because she's a beast and she is going to crush some guys and hurt some egos and, and it's going to be great. Um, then, uh, we've got uh, VTG coming out as well. Who's a veterinary tactical group. And Janice Baker, she is a, uh, a veterinarian, and she used to work for our counterparts uh, in the Navy. Um, and she was a vet with them for a really long time. And man, like Janice has gathered so much data and and developed so many techniques for treating injured canines on the battlefield. And I, man, I, I can't even put a number to the amount of canines that the knowledge that she's imparted with us has saved. Um, and, and she has continued to do so for handlers across the country. Now that she started up VTG, um, man, she, she has really personally saved a lot of dogs, uh, by sharing that, that, that information. And, you know, it's not just the trauma specific stuff, um, that everyone thinks of it. It's also your, your everyday kind of stuff. Like, bloat and heat exhaustion and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Like she's going to teach you how to, how to treat all the different possible injuries that, that you can encounter as a handler. Um, um, then you've also got uh, Justin Rigney, Justin, he's going to be teaching a uh, great e-collar course. Um, he's another one of those guys, just very well-rounded in everything that he does. But uh, yeah, he's going to share like proper utilization of an e-collar and, and rick you know as well as i do man that an e-collar utilized incorrectly can actually absolutely be detrimental to a dog yep so justin's going to go ahead and, and teach us how to properly incorporate that not just as like like a lot of guys use them like the brakes like hey <laughs> no i don't want you to do that man <clears throat> but you know what there, there's a lot of ways that you can utilize that e-collar e to get more performance out of your dog. Um, yep. And so Justin's going to go ahead and show us that. Then, of course, we got you coming out, Rick, and, and everyone's Jay really excited for that. Go ahead, man. Yeah. It, no, I, I just want to interject on the e-collar part, right? Because I think this is this is a huge part. Um, you know, for all the guys out there listening, you know, watching whatever the case may be, everyone thinks the e-collar is a correction tool or a shaping tool or something like that. And, yes, that's primarily its focus. But here's the deal. You have to think outside the box when it comes to the e-collar. So I know for me, one of the things I used my e-collar for, it was for both Marco and Duco, it was their silent recalls. So the last thing I want to do, and you know this, brother, you're out in the palm grove somewhere hunting yep. some dude down. You know, that dog has, has taken that bite of terrain. You want to move up to him. I can't go, hey, man, come here, buddy. And then next, you know, gunfires are open. You know, it's like, how do I get that dog back to me? And you're not sitting there smacking them on a high six on your Tritronics, a simple, you know, low, medium one on a steady bump. You know, he's going to come back to somewhere in the pack and it's like, all right, buddy, let's get your reset, move up to that point, relaunch you. And dude, it, people are absolutely amazed when I tell them that. They're like, you can do that? I'm like, well, yeah. I mean, why wouldn't you? So I just think it's important, especially with the e-collar, because like you said, I've seen too many dogs messed up from it. I've seen too many guys try to run these things at high six and go, my dog's not doing anything. Then you're like, now what are you going to do when that dog didn't need a high six? They just didn't know how to work the oh, collar. Yeah. So super, super important on that one. But go ahead. Let's talk yep. about this Warhog tactical guy since you were going to hit on him. Yeah, man. So, <laughs> so, so we got you coming in, man. And, and you know what? Like, yeah, I, I've already heard a lot of guys that are excited to, to attend your course in particular, man. You mm -hmm. know, it's uh, with not just with, with marksmanship, but it seems that, that, commonplace in canine training is man it's it's all about the dog you know mm -hmm. all we focus on is dog training whether it's detection or bite development or tracking or whatever the case may be and very seldom do we do we focus on training the canine team as a whole all right mm -hmm. or or the handler specific task and one of them is yeah we we might get on the range and do a little gunfire neutralization but it, it's rare that you see a lot of all officers work actual marksmanship while they have a canine on them you know man pistol shooting is not easy 
right? And then you've got a dog at the end of a six foot and you're trying to shoot one handed, you know, mm -hmm. and that, yeah. that man, that just makes it even more difficult. And now let's throw in, oh, hey, by the way, I'm getting shot at at the same time. So yeah. man, mm -hmm. now that, that difficulty level has, has skyrocketed and Man, so now we got you coming in to teach that advanced pistol marksmanship, shooting that one-handed, uh, inducing a lot of stress. And you know what? Let, let me just let you go ahead and, and give a little bit on on what you plan on teaching there, Rick, because, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of guys are super excited, and, and you can better describe it than I can, man. Yeah, so really, you know, everything that Warhawk Tactical does is a building block met methodology. So, you know, a lot of guys think, all right, cool, we're going to come out of the gates, and we're going to do all this stuff. Man, you know what? First thing we're going to do is just get the dogs out there. And it, because how many guys have actually done anything with their firearm with the dog? And I'm not even talking shooting bullets. I'm talking merely draw the pistol out of the holster. Because I've seen some guys that were quote unquote experts or the dogs were trained. And that mere action and that dog seeing that gun because of whatever prior training they had, next thing you know, turns on the handler. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's work that out <laughs> yep. to make sure that. That that's good before we even progress into into looking at, you know, the officer's marksmanship ability. So we're going to work on that a little bit. Um, you know, obviously we're going to start at a, at a muzzled level because that puts you know control into us. Um, you know, once we feel comfortable with that, you know, muzzles come off. Okay, cool. But again, it's working things in sections. So then you know we'll put the dogs up. We'll give the guys a chance to work on their marksmanship a little bit. Um, pull the dogs out. Kind of we'll probably work like a uh, split crew type deal where hey, kind of bring your dogs out where. You're giving them a little bit of being neutral to canine or neutral to gunfire um, while they're working around the line. And we'll talk about the specifics on that because it's not bringing straight up to the line as this line shoots. That's a no bueno. So the dogs will be back, you know, a ways and they'll slowly encroach as the handler feels, hey, this dog can take whatever they're doing. Kind of flip flop that, put the dogs up. So more uh, marksmanship training. And then really my plan is. And again, it's a plan. It doesn't mean that every dog will be able to execute, but if we're at the point, you know, we'll actually get the officer out there shooting with his dog uh, prior to. So the thing is, guys, I've got no dramas talking to any of the officers that's looking to attend, you know, hit me up via email, uh, DM, preferably on Instagram. Don't do Facebook because I'm not uh, very good on my Facebook page. But uh, if you have questions about how to make your dog gunfire prior to, that would be a huge benefit because then that's just going to be able to uh, speed up your training. But I do believe, JC, don't you have somebody that's doing neutral to gunfire? Yeah, absolutely, man. That was that was the next one on the list. So we've got Mike yep. Pennington from uh, Storm Dog Tactical. That, that's right. Mike yep. does a really good job of uh, it, of doing that, working that gunfire neutralization for dogs. Um, we, you know, like Mike was another guy that. Uh, you know, I, I happened to see him at a conference up in Ohio, uh, you know, went into that and watched how he was doing things and was like, you know what, that, that's someone that I want to try. So we brought him down to work and man, mm -hmm. you know, like not only was he great with the gunfire neutralization, but he also has a way of teaching like control while that dog's in drive. And mm -hmm. he, man, you, you remember my dog Jinko there, Rick. Can he was a handful <laughs> of times, man. Love, and uh, you know guy. what? Like, yeah. <laughs> so, anyways, man, we uh, you know, Mike was able to teach me a lot of stuff that that not only uh had to do with gunfire neutralization, but just being able to have that control over my dog when that dog was really in drive, and man, that mm -hmm. that stuff was you know just invaluable when it came to to doing my job man and uh yeah so he's another one man so he his course will tie in very nicely with yours as well um and yeah he's he's just another guy that's really well versed when it comes to to dog training um and then uh hey, JC. and we got my company direct that yeah go ahead man hey sorry to interrupt you i just um one question you know rick and i do you know some leo uh, trainings throughout the country. And, and sometimes we're required, you know, despite of how great we think the program is, we're required to actually reach out to the uh, municipality itself. And uh, I guess you could say, sell it, that kind of thing. I guess my question is what kind of reaction are you getting um, with the departments themselves? Are they all for it? Is it a, are you running into budgetary problems? Are, are you able to, to, uh, 
do any kind of work around or anything like that because we've actually had to reach out and call chiefs assistant chiefs and talk to them directly just to get their guys to come out to the training and that was free yeah so well what we've got is uh like we said initially man we we started a nonprofit to make this as affordable as we can for mm -hmm. guys and and that's again i understand the 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 dilemmas that that a lot of cops face when it comes to budget stuff and uh you know yeah man a lot of swat teams are really well funded but again when it comes to the canine teams not not as well funded so with doing so what we've done is is we're we've made it to where the uh the conference is only five hundred dollars now that in itself is a steal but not only do you get all that great training for five hundred dollars but you're also that also covers your lodging and meals for the entire wow. week and that's man, amazing like you yeah you can't beat that no and, and i'm i'm pretty yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're familiar with it. Uh, we're, we're, we're hosting the conference. It's actually, uh, we're, we're doing this in conjunction with the Cincinnati PD. Um, their canine section is helping host this event with us. And we're doing it at the uh, Muscatatuck tra uh, Urban Training Center in Indiana, which isn't very far from Cincinnati. But no, the nice yeah. thing about Muscatatuck is, man, it is centrally located to a lot of, you know, uh, like it's just south of Indianapolis, just west of Cincinnati, a little north of Kentucky. You know, like you, you've got a lot of big metropolitan ci cities oh, yeah. on, in every cardinal direction around Muscatatuck. And man, when it comes to a venue, you can't beat this place. Like it's a uh, National Guard facility, but man, they they really put some effort into this. And and when it comes to environmentals, which which is a huge portion of, of canine training, man, they they've got every type of venue that you can think of for realism and that that's gonna that's gonna bring a lot of realism to to our uh training but yeah so with with that that low price tag and we tried to make it more appealing for departments by covering lodging and meals because you know how it is like oh five hundred dollars but then you got to drive your car there and it's running 12 hours a day. So you're paying for gas, you're paying another thousand dollars for a hotel plus per diem for all your meals and stuff. And that $500 price tag just went to like a couple grand. So that was one thing we wanted to mitigate to make it more appealing for departments to cover costs on this one is, Hey man, $500 covers meals and lodging. Now, granted, it, we're not staying at embassy suites or anything. We're staying in military lodging, but you know what? It, it's, it's it's good. We're we're not there to party. We're there to train, you know. Uh, unlike some other conferences, but yeah. So <laughs> all that's covered, man. And and we again tried to make it as affordable as we could. So I, I think with that price tag, uh, that'll that'll make it a lot more appealing for for departments to to go ahead and approve that training for guys. Awesome. Hey, uh, I want to jump so, in real quick, JC. Yeah. No, let's cut you off. Ahead, so real quick. So Jeremy, Jeremy was just asking. So again, we kind of get some input from, uh, from some of our listeners. Um, but anyway, he was just asking, Hey, have you seen a gun shy dog advance past, um, uh, the reaction? And yeah, I mean, here's the thing, Jeremy, right? You got to understand some dogs have never been exposed to gunfire. So you've got to start somewhere. And typically if you do it right, you can get them over the hurdles. They just need to understand what's going on. So, um completely done and then just one other thing to add to jc that i didn't stick in uh kind of in my description too so one of the things is um whether it's my warhog regular class or even for the the uh canine ones you know we bring old t-shirts and the beauty is now especially from the dog side i hope we have a little bit of of a win that week because now the dogs will actually see that target down there with that t-shirt that'll have a slight movement that will hopefully help kind of tune them in a little bit like you're talking about with mike putting in you know dealing with that dog and drive um because he really can't tell you know he just kind of knows hey there's something moving is that the guy or is that not the guy so just adding that realism to it so all right buddy yeah. i'll let you roll from yeah, here and, and and i agree with you man you you can definitely like we we've we've both experienced it man you got those dogs that are just like what the hell and you know you you, you try mm -hmm. to you try to do a good job when your selection process, but you know, like that's just something that's not natural for those dogs. And, and yes, yeah. it can be overcome through good training. 
Um, and, mm -hmm. and again, uh, Rick's class, Mike's class, both, both great ones to start with when it comes to getting that dog past that hurdle. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. So, uh, next is my company. It's a direct action canine and we kind of focus on a lot of realistic scenario based training. Um, so for us, I've got, I've got a good staff uh, that's a good, healthy mix of both military and law enforcement guys. All the guys are, you know, trainers from their departments. They're all SWAT handlers and stuff. So, so we've got a great uh, amount of experience when it comes to, uh, to our uh, staff there. And what we've done is we went ahead and we looked at, we, we did kind of case studies on a lot of situations that real world situations that officers have been exposed to uh, over the years and basically tailored scenarios around those. Uh, and, and what we've done is we, we, we got rid of just those canned scenarios and we made it as realistic because so for us, I don't want it to be like, well, Hey man, you know, if I was doing this for real, I would have done it this way. Well, Hey, that's how I want you to do it, man. Like, so, mm -hmm. so we've, we've thought of all the different ways that a guy could respond, that a dog could respond. And we basically mitigated everything and, and tailored the scenario to where, Hey man, you, you run it like you would do it for real. You know, because that's something we want to get you out of that training mindset. We want to get you into that realistic mindset of, hey, man, I want that combat mindset, not just, hey, I, you know, I've got this tool. And, and man, I hate to say it, but a lot of canine officers are guilty of this. They get this this dog and, man, it's an, it's an, an amazing tool that they can incorporate. But a lot of guys forget that they have to be a cop first, you know, and, and they, re they really rely on the dog and tactics go out the window, man. And, uh, you know, that's unfortunately that, that can put guys into a, into a really bad situation. So we, we try to show guys that, Hey man, although it's a great tool, it's not the tool for every sort of application. So you have to think about like, hey, how do I properly, what, what techniques do I use for this situation that I'm encountering right now? Um, and we do a lot of different things. Like we throw in med play, we, we throw in, you know, gunfire, you know, all, all sorts of tactics. So, so we, we incorporate a lot of the different stuff and, and, and basically that, that training methodology that we use at, at those higher echelons in the military, we're, we're bringing that to the cop world, which unfortunately I don't, I don't think a lot of departments train that way, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so now we're, we're giving them just a different way of training, you know, and hopefully they can take those skill sets back and and better their training curriculum for their departments as well. Yeah. Um, next, hey, we've got hey, Jace, a uh, want, kinetic want... performance dog food. Yeah, man. No, go ahead, buddy. That, that lad. Go ahead, brother. Dog food. Go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. No, we'll, all right. So, so we've got a kinetic dog food. They're uh, they're coming in. They're one of our big sponsors for this event as well. But they're going to be teaching guys how to properly read dog food labels all right because nutrition when it comes to a canine it's, it's just like a an elite athlete man that that dog needs to have a proper nutrition uh as well so unfortunately there's so many different types of dog food out there and, and a lot of guys just don't know like hey man is this a good dog food for me or is that one you know like damn it i don't know so Kinetics is going to come in and they're going to teach guys, you know, it's, it's not even a sales pitch. It's, Hey man, this is how you read that label to figure out what's great for your dog. You know, uh, these are the nutrients that they need. These are the things that you need to steer clear of. And, and they're going to give a great nutrition class. So handlers can go out and find that, that food for their dog. That's going to get them performing at optimal levels. Now, go ahead, man. No, I was just going to say, um, Matter of fact, I was going to ask about the nutrition part and if there was anybody that was bringing out some uh, things like food and and uh, that kind of thing for the the handlers to take a look at. But you just answered my question. Yeah, absolutely. And and yeah, yeah, they uh, you know they kinetics is is real good when it comes to uh, they'll they'll give you a bag of dog food to try for free. And you know what? 
that, you know, every time you swap to a different food, it's going to mess with that dog's digestive system a little bit till he gets used to it. But man, it, you know, with a whole bag of food, you're going to get to see that, Hey, they'll get past that. And then you'll, you'll really see the benefits of the food that they offer. All right. And again, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to do a little sales pitch here, but you know, that, that is like, that's something that a lot of guys are like, Oh man, I, I give my dog Benefol or whatever, you know, like, Hey, that's, right. that's not really what you, you know, like might be great for a pet, but it's not great for, for a service animal that, that is, you know, a working dog that, that needs to be at that peak performance level. Yeah. Um, then, uh, yeah, you know, we've also got uh, Donnie Meese, who's the head trainer out there at Cincinnati. He's going to be teaching tactical obedience, um, which is something that, you know, a lot of guys, they they don't really focus on the tactical obedience. And, mm. and you know, everybody's got their own way of, of moving tactically and, and how they want that dog to, to maneuver while, while, you know, at the same time. So Donnie's not going to sit there and tell you, Hey, this is exactly how you do it. What he's going to do is show you the building blocks of how to get that dog to do the task that you want it to do. And, and that whole training methodology for all the stepping stones to get to that point. Um, you know, cause there, there's, there's things, that, Hey man, like that, that show dog stuff, that sport dog stuff with, with some of those obedience things, man, like, Hey, that's not necessarily how I want my dog to move when I'm trying to move tactically, you know, like that dog might, <laughs> because he's out ahead of me, he might end up, you know, giving up surprise, you know, on, on my part and put me in a bad situation or because he's cutting me off. So if I start taking income and fire, man, he is, he is, you know, reduce the, the direction that I can, that I can react and, and try to seek cover. So, you know, that, that whole, tactical obedience it, it's not your your typical sport dog obedience you know so that's something that uh, i don't think a lot of guys work on either but you know donnie's gonna give a great class and teach guys how to teach this to their dogs and train them and then get them to the point that they need um so i'm really looking forward to donnie giving that class as well then uh Last one we've got is uh, Revac USA. Uh, Revac is going to teach a uh, lot of rope applications. So all the rope operations, you know, repelling with your canine. Um, and, you know, th this course isn't going to be for everybody, but it's absolutely uh, critical for for. SWAT guys, military guys, um, you know, those those guys that do a lot of rural uh <clears throat> mountain type operations, search and rescue dogs, you know, so that's a skill set that not a lot of people have. And, and is definitely, you know, Rick and I, we, we did all sorts of rope operations, you know, and, uh, you know, whether it's, you know, it, it could be something like, damn, man, my dog ended up in a well and how the hell do I get it out of there? Mm -hmm. well, yep. You know what? Like, Revac and his guys, they, they can teach you all the different equipment and applications that you need to know for, for utilizing, you know, for descent, ascent, whatever the case may be when it comes to, to, uh, you getting down as well as your, uh, as well as your canine. Um, so, uh, the other great thing is, uh, one of our sponsors is Petzl. So they're going to be helping Revac out, you know, with some equipment and, and, and training as well. Um, so yeah, man, that's, uh, right now, that's who we've got for our, uh, instructor lineup, which you see, man, all of these guys are, are guys that have worked with the tier one organizations throughout the country. They've got a lot of experience, you know, that, that, man, you, you just don't, you don't get that whole, in a whole lot of places. And again, when it comes to canine work, man, unfortunately, you don't know what you, you don't know, you know, so there's a lot of guys out there claiming that they're dog trainers and that they're the best thing out there. And, and of course they're going to bad mouth everybody else, you know, so, so they can kind of bring more, more customers and keep those customers with them. Well, you know what, like everyone that we've got coming in, man, they don't need that. They've, they've trained with the best. They, they've got mm -hmm. th their, their reputation precedes them. So, 
So these these are guys that man, you're you're gonna learn a lot from, and they're the real deal. They'll, they've taught all the elite units out there. Um, and then, you know, we've, we've got a lot of great sponsors, you know, like we talked about, we are a nonprofit. So we depend the, the way that we make this affordable for those handlers is through, uh, corporate and, and private sponsors and, and their donations. Um, like we mentioned kinetic dog food, they're, they're one of our big sponsors, you know, so they're, they're helping us out quite a bit. We've also got FOP Lodge 69 from up there in Cincinnati. They, they've helped donate yeah, as well. We've got, got the, uh, yeah, man, we've got the uh, Police Canine Association from Ohio. Again, Petzl, um, Point Blank Enterprises, Glock, Sig Sauer, First Tactical, uh, Spikes Canine Fund. Man, there's, there's another uh, of our Navy counterpart handlers that uh, has gone ahead and started his own nonprofit. And man, Jimmy Hatch, he, uh, you know, unfortunately he lost a canine while he was deployed and, you know, came back and started the spikes canine fund. And now he does a lot of great work for, uh, for <clears throat> officers out there by providing them, uh, vests, medical treatment, uh, door poppers, you know, st all the, all those good things that, uh, that handlers need. And, and again, because of budgetary restraints, they can't afford, you know, so, so spikes fund does a lot to, uh, help those officers out. We've also got uh, Bulletproof Canine, uh, Polaris. They're, they're actually going to bring a few machines out and let guys go ahead and test those out. And you know what? They, nice. They've got a, a big canine lineup that they've been working on. Um, so they're going to bring that stuff out there as well. Uh, we've got Mystery Ranch, their backpacks, uh, Bounce Image. They're another company that, man, they've got uh, some good uh, cameras that they want to bring out. Um, and let guys try out Cryptech, Magpul, Right in the Rain, Vortex, Trigicon, and man, the, the list of sponsors keeps growing. That's another thing. If if uh, if you you or your company wants to help sponsor this event, just go to our website www.atk9.org, and you can see we've got different sponsor levels. Or if you're just a, a private citizen that wants to donate, you can go ahead and donate on the website as well. Um, but yeah, all these, all these, uh, these sponsors, man, they're, they're helping in some way or another, but most of them, um, you know, we're, we're having a vendor day as part of the conference and it allows these, these handlers to see all the different types of gear that's out there on the market right now that can potentially help them with some of their equipment gaps. Um, but we're not just doing your typical vendor day, which is, you know, kind of like that mini shot show where, Hey man, we've got all the vendors and they've got their table set up with all their products and they give a good table spiel. Yeah. That, that's part of it. We're absolutely doing that. But the other thing that that's unique to our conference is, man, these, these guys, they're, they're getting their products out to the training venues, uh, to all the different courses and they're trying to incorporate their stuff into the training scenarios. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to allow guys to get their hands on this equipment. And instead of just going back to their department and being like, you know what? Hey, uh, yeah, I got this really cool spiel. This, the stuff sounds kind of good. Um, maybe we should look into it. Well, no, man, they got their hands on this equipment. They got to run it through the ringer and now they can go back with the education that they got from the vendors at the table, plus their hands on experience and go back with an educated assessment, um, and hands on experience back to their departments and be able to justify, Hey, look, this, this is something that we should really invest into. And this is why, uh, you know, as opposed to, Hey man, it, it looks really cool on the brochure, you know? So, so that's one thing that, man, we're, we're really looking forward to. And we really appreciate the, uh, the sponsors, uh, support in these regards. So, so yeah, some of them are helping out, uh, in, in through monetary donations, others are helping out with, uh, equipment and being able to incorporate that equipment into, uh, our scenarios and stuff. Now we've got, uh, one of the, the couple of sponsors that are, that we didn't mention, but are looking at coming on. We got Ray Allen manufacturing, who's a huge, you know, uh, supplier when it comes to canine equipment, um, probably the nation's leader when it comes to supplying equipment for, for organizations across the country, as well as uh, we've got less lethal products. Who's, who's a huge distributor for, 
for all your different types of uh, less lethal munitions when it comes to, you know, training bangers, pepper balls, you know, all your less lethal munitions. Um, they're they're going to come down and and uh, and showcase some of their products and let us incorporate it into the training as well. So that's something that you know we we're really again, man. We we want to set ourselves apart from everybody else. And look, there's a lot of great conferences out there. You know, those lecture ones, hey, they're, they're great conferences. You get a lot out of them. Unfortunately, they're not training venues. So you get this, this knowledge that you can't really apply once you get home. So we wanted to change that, you know, and like, hey, man, let's, let's bring the – have an actual training conference for guys to go to and just go home and like once you're done with this like you're actually bringing skill sets home that you can apply to your training and you've got the knowledge and the takeaway to go ahead and do that as opposed to man that's a really cool idea we need to bring that student out to our place you know for however much money and maybe we can do it then no man you're, you're gonna leave here with a lot of knowledge and again these are all world-renowned trainers that that are gonna they're they're gonna impart a lot of experience on you that are gonna make you better at what you do they're gonna make your dog better and and hopefully give you the skill sets that you need to train more realistically to bring you home safely and to bring your dog home safely and and in the end that's what matters man you know you a lot of handlers you you're running a tool that if used incorrectly can cause a lot of liability for that department. So we want to be able to show you like, Hey, work on your decision-making skills, work on that dog's performance, mm -hmm. your performance, just the, the, the whole well-rounded package that, that everything that dog handling entails. So that that's what we're hoping to do with this conference. And uh, you know, hopefully, from here, because it is a training conference, uh, you know, like, hey, man, it, this one's going to be in Indiana. Next one, we're not sure where it's going to be, but what we're trying to do is get them to where uh, we we host them in, in, in different regions within the country. So that way, guys from every part of the country will have an opportunity to attend these venues. And uh, like I said, you know, if you want more information on the uh, on the conference, you can go to uh, www.atk9.org and you can see about our organization. You can also see about the conference. If you're interested in sponsoring, there's a sponsor page there as well that shows you the different levels of sponsorship. And, uh, and again, if you're, you're a private donor and you want to donate, there's, there's a spot for that as well where you can donate to the cause. And, uh, yeah, man, we're, we're really looking forward to this. And we, we think it's going to be a, a great conference for, uh, for all these handlers across the country, man. Yeah. So real quick, I just want to hit in uh, just a couple things. So Jeremy was asking, and this kind of plays right in. So he was, uh, do the good dogs gain a quote unquote tactical situation awareness for situations like that where the handler could be hindered by the dog? being in the way or is it purely a train reaction so really jeremy here's the deal and kind of for the viewers listeners out there tactical obedience you know or situational awareness it's really driven off the handler is the eye of the hurricane for that dog so he's kind of he should be able to see hey what's going on but you see some people out there that teach in my opinion and, and i know jc will uh get on this and i'm not trying to get on a soapbox or stir the pot so just work with me J here jc but if you're one of these cats out there that you are running a dog and you think sticking that dog between your legs is a viable tactical technique, I'm going to tell you, <laughs> you are very wrong. Um, I, I had to put it out there and I'm not sure because again, people have seen things that sets you up for failure. So anyway, getting back to the point, you can train yep. these dogs exactly. And these dogs will, if you put the time in, they will more or less turn to autopilot and they know exactly what to do, but it requires reps and nothing against my LE guys. The problem is from the canine handler side, my opinion, they do not steal every opportunity they can to train. So here's the deal. We're just hanging out. Nothing's going on. Can I not take five minutes work obedience with my dog? Sure. I can. Can I not lay a quick track and have him work a track if he's, you know, 
you know, if tracking is one of his skill sets, 100% I can. If he's, you know, a sniffer dog, can I not put something out there and do a detection problem? I most certainly can. Am I smoking that dog so he doesn't, uh, he's so tired he can't work again? Nope. I'm just putting little short iterations in there. And that's the biggest thing I see that guys don't um, capitalize that. So, yes, Jeremy, that does not work. The dog between the legs technique, uh, it's absolutely catastrophic. The other point I got to inject, JC, yeah. is the revac guys. It is the revac guys, right? Because guys are going to go, man, I'm not doing nothing with ropes and dogs. And you want me to repel off of a Coke can as an anchor point? You've lost your mind. I'm going to tell you, these guys are the these guys are the best in the business. I would tell you, if it were me, I would jump on board. Um, not only from you know the repelling side of it or descending, but the ascending as well. And like you were saying, pal, God forbid your dog should go in a ditch somewhere or you need to do something that you got to rig a pulley type system. It plays over to not only to the canine side, but potentially to another officer side, yep. a citizen, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. But, yeah. but the revac guys, they are masters at their craft when it comes to rope work. And um, it's one of those, I don't know what they're planning. JC, they tell you what they're kind of planning to do. Are they going to bring out any exo kits or stuff uh, like that? You know, with, with a one day course, man, um, you know, they're, they're primarily going to, primarily going to focus on their uh, decent stuff. Um, yep. you know, just the repelling and stuff, but yeah, they're, yeah, they're going to bring out their equipment. Like we said, Petzl is one of our sponsors. They're going to bring a lot of the equipment out. Um, so if you, you've got your own harnesses and, and stuff like that, absolutely bring them, you know, but a lot of guys they're they're probably not going to have that. And we don't expect mm -hmm. you to go out and buy that stuff. So, you know what, Brett and Petzl will be able to provide a lot of that equipment so you can still conduct the training, even if you don't have that, that, that equipment for yourself yeah you know so don't don't let lack of equipment deter you from signing up for that course if this is something that that you feel is going to benefit you in in the environment that you work in by all means take the course and once you have that experience you'll know exactly what equipment you need to purchase to go ahead and do that mm -hmm. so yeah Absolutely, man. Don't and, don't let that stop you. But yeah, yeah, you're right, Rick, man. Those those guys are masters at what they do, man. Yeah, and I can't talk enough about Brett, right? Because and he's not one that's gonna sell you a bunch of garbage. You know, I'm gonna tell you this nope. from personal experience. Do you need a harness? Man, you can go off of your riggers belt, providing you got a proper one. Um, granted, your britches may be uh, up in your butt crack a little bit, but trust me, you can make a descent safely with that. How do I know? Ah, you know, I know this guy, but the exo kit, um, and that was part that they developed, man, that exo kit is an absolute phenomenal piece of kit and they will show you. And I don't know if he's looking at how much he's getting into stuff, but literally we have descended off of, um, old Coke cans, spray cans, just things are going, this is my anchor point. And chem lights. I'm telling you guys, I'm, yeah, chem lights, a, a rolled up newspaper, chem lights crazy with a flash stuff, bang man. Ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you're going, I'm dying. <laughs> no, man, trust me. These guys know exactly what they're doing, but I, I would, that would be one of those I highly recommend if it's, uh, if you've got any potential of doing anything rope work with a dog, man, absolutely phenomenal. So I, I got to give those guys, cause I just oh, love yeah, those dudes man. and I've done stuff. I've done stuff um, with the dog, without the dog, and just they are just a good, amazing people on a skill set that not a whole bunch of people possess in this country, in my opinion. So, yeah. enough of me in the reback. Oh, yeah. Uh, soap wagon. So, well, it sounds like you got a great lineup, JC, and it looks like it's going to be a great uh, training event. Um, yeah, we're going to put uh, all the information, your website, in the show notes. That way, people can uh, click right on it. And, uh, hey, guys, if you're able to help, uh, especially if you're a small or even a, uh, medium-sized business owner, man, go ahead and jump on there and uh, see if you can't support JC and what they're doing. Hey guys, if you're listening to Apple, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon, Audible, or music, go ahead and interact with the page, comment, give us a rating, leave a message in there, even if it's just an emoji or one word, help boost and smash this algorithm that we're dealing with. Um, you know what, JC, it's going to be great having you up here in this area and uh, really looking forward to it. And uh, I'm I'm sure with the lineup that you put together and everything that you're doing, that you're going to have a great turnout. And uh, I, hopefully you'll come back on the show. Rick and I will push this out again. We'll have another, uh, you know, give us an update the closer we get. So uh, if you don't mind coming back, brother. 
Oh, absolutely, man. But I, I got to say, man, we're, uh, one thing we didn't mention is we're, we're kind of limiting uh, the amount of slots for this venue. Okay. And the reason is, man, we're, it, this isn't about making money. This is about giving guys quality training. So in, in place of just, Hey man, let's see how many attendees we can pack in here. No, man, that, that that's not what we're doing. So we've gone ahead, we've gotten with every instructor and we figured out, all right, man, Hey, how, how many guys can you train that they can walk away with, with, with the knowledge that you expect them to have. So each of those guys gave us their numbers and we came up with, Hey man, based off of that, 200 attendees is all we can handle. So you know, don't, don't sit around and wait. Cause I, I know how, how cops and, and just handlers are, they wait till the last minute. One, mm -hmm. the price is going to go up at the end of July, <laughs> you know? So, mm -hmm. so it, it's more advantageous for you to, to purchase the, the registration now, but two, if, if you wait to the last minute, there's not going to be any slots left, man. People are already starting to sign up. And uh, so you don't want to miss out, man, especially if you're up in that area, Go ahead and sign up now. Don't wait because <laughs> you, you might miss out on this opportunity yeah. altogether. Yeah, man. Because JC, real quick, correct me if I'm wrong. You're doing, you will try to accommodate the handler's requests, but they're doing it via a number system kind of on their preference of what training they're looking for, correct? Yeah. So, so with all these, you'll see when, when you go to the website, you'll see all the different, uh, all the instructors and the courses that they're offering. Um, now, when you go to register, obviously this is a week long venue. All right. So, so it's four training days. Um, and one of those days is the, uh, the vendor day. So each day you'll pick a different instructor that you want to train with. Now those courses are first come first serve. So when you sign up, you'll pick your primary four courses that you want to attend. And you'll also pick a, a secondary four courses that in the event that those classes are already full, we can try to accommodate the, uh, your, your second selection. But bottom line is, Hey, the, the later you sign up and if those courses are full, you, you're going to kind of get what you get, you know, and th that's the reality of it. We've only got so many slots per day per instructor. So again, if you wait to the last minute to go ahead and sign up, if you get a slot at all, you might not get the courses that you want, man. And, and unfortunately that's just the reality of it. Cause we, it's not a lecture type training event. It, it's all training. Mm -hmm. So, uh, it, we, if, if you want to just sit around and, and not get any training time in, <laughs> well, Hey, you know, then, then that'd be perfect, but that's not what we're doing <laughs> here, man. Now yeah. we also, we, we do have, we do have just uh, like auditor slots. So guys that just want to observe that they're not coming to train, they're not bringing their dog. So if you just want to come observe, yeah, we, we've got slots for you because you know what, that's not taken away from the guys that are training, but you can still get a little knowledge and bring that back to your organization. Just unfortunately, you're not going to be able to, uh, to work your dog on it. So if you want to just observe, we, you've got that opportunity as well. Yeah, it sounds like it's going to be fantastic, brother. It really does. It really does. Sounds like a venue for a uh, on-the-range yeah, podcast on location. Yes. Event. Yes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, man. What a blast that would be. It's going to be great. To, it, it's man. going to be great to have you up here in this area. Yeah, so, come on out. Car carve out uh, carve out a time or, or day. Uh, Rick and I will uh, show you around town. And, uh, you know, we got some places we can go down here. Yeah, sounds good, man. We're all about it. All right, buddy. But yeah, right, thanks Rick. for having me, guys. Really appreciate you. Yeah, man. You definitely Absolute, have to come absolutely, back. Brother. I appreciate all your service and all your giving back, JC. Really appreciate that. Yeah, same to you guys. All right, buddy. All right, hey, buddy. hang on, hang on here for a second, uh, JC. We're gonna sign off and we'll catch back up to you here. So don't hang up yet. All right, brother. All right. All right, buddy. Another one in the books. Great show. A lot of good information. We'll have a lot of this stuff in the show notes, buddy. Appreciate you being yeah, here man. With me tonight, Rick. That was a lot of Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. Great, great show, pal. Yeah, man. Jeff, uh, Jeremy, and uh, some of the other guys. I know I'm, I'm uh, missing some guys. Thanks for joining the show. And uh, I tell you what, Rick, let's do this again. I know you got a big week this week, range week, but we'll put yep. some stuff out there. 
And again, guys, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, interact, hit uh, the subscribe, like, and leave us a comment. All right, brother, let's do this again uh, real soon, pal. Great uh, job you know, by buddy. JC and what he's doing. All right, buddy. Yeah, Have man. a good day. All right, take care. See you, everybody. You